But don't fear, oh my daughters Or sons of Abraham For I will wash you with water Or I will offer the lamb Though your sins were like scarlet They'll be whiter than snow I have always been with you I will never let go I will bring you back home I'll bring you back home, oh my children You will no longer own Lost and alone in the night Deuteronomy 33, 2 through 4 says, And he said, The word came from Sinai and dawned on them from Seir. He shone forth from Mount Paran, and he came with ten thousand of saints, ten thousands of saints. From his right hand came a fiery law for them. Yes, he loves the people. All his saints are in your hand. They sit down at your feet. Everyone receives your words. Moses commanded a law for us, a heritage of the congregation of Jacob. Like that the fiery law. So, uh, thank y'all for being here. That was, uh, uh, what's, what's the lady's name from uh, Dawn? Uh, I want to say Clarice, but I don't think it's Clarissa. 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 She said that, uh, that she can't hear me very well when she's watching online, mm -hmm. but that uh, she hears everybody else. Uh, she, yeah, that she, she hears no. Yeah, she hears everybody else okay. But uh, the gal that moved up to Colorado, Gayla, mm -hmm. she says that uh, she can hear everybody else, but she can't hear me. I mean, they, they have the opposite. Hmm. So, any of y'all ever watch online any trouble hearing? I usually <coughs> I can hear her talking all the time. <laughs> well, she's sitting right by the microphone. So. Yeah, I can hear you and Laura when I'm on my video. So if you say something, talk real loud. You need to pipe it down a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> and Rob, 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 Rob needs to enunciate and speak more. I can. I, per, I project when I speak. Okay. 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 Well, y'all join me in saying the blessing. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who has sanctified us in His commandments and commanded us to engross ourselves in the words of Torah. And in Hebrew. Okay, so uh, this portion is Yitro. Starts out with uh, Jethro's <coughs> advice and the law concerning the altar. So, what, what, what was Jethro's advice? Stop get, that. Get help. Why get help. are you doing this all yourself? Delegate. 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 And how to administer judgment to 
through a system. Yes, so he doesn't have to do it all himself. Mm -hmm. So one man doesn't have to do it all himself. And what's the book, what's the law concerning the altar? No cut stones. Well, it's no cut stones, but it's where uh, judgment is pronounced. Hmm. Right? Right. And then we have Israel reaches Mount Sinai and the Ten Commandments. So they get to Mount Sinai and they receive the commandments. And what happens in between reaching the mountain and the Ten Commandments? Complaining. No. The golden calf. No, no. <clears throat> In between getting to yeah, oh, getting to the mountain and getting the commandments, oh. the people have to become consecrated. Mm -hmm. What is what's consecrated? Set apart. Consecrated. Oh, they have to get their act together, yeah. wash their clothes, cleaned up, cleaned up, cleaned up. Cleaned up. Cleaned up. Right. Get ready, get ready, get ready. And don't touch your wife. <laughs> yeah, don't touch your wife. Cause she slapped you. Okay. Uh, now Jethro, the priest of Gideon, Moses' father-in-law, heard of all that God had done for Moses and for his people. Portion tells the story of Jethro's visit to the camp of Israel. Then relates the great theophany. What's a theophany? Some Greek word. <laughs> well, an appearance of God at Mount Sinai where God gives Israel the Ten Commandments and invites the people to enter a special covenant relationship with him. What, what is a special covenant relationship? A marriage covenant. Marriage covenant. It's, it's, it's like a marriage covenant, but it's an agreement. <coughs> if you do this, I will do this. If I do this, you, then you do this, right? And so I would, when, when speaking of God, I would kind of state that different. Okay. God says, I will do this. He's going to do it whether you not do it or not. Right. You say, I will do that. You can remain with him if you do that. Uh, yeah, I mean, in, in every relationship, there's a stronger and weaker position. I mean, you see that in countries. You see it with businesses and so forth. I mean, people uh, deal from a position of strength or a position of weakness. Peers have a hard time coming to agreement. You know what I mean? Because you know somebody wants to be the winner because there's a competition. competition. But there is no competition with God. Why? Because he is who he is. Because he is who he is. He's going to be who's going to be. So that means into the fundamentals of faith. When God revealed himself to us, he did not give us a systematic theology creed, recipes, or diagrams. He gave us a legal code consisting of covenant terms and obligations. He gave us laws, and each law brings a fresh revelation of him. That's good. He did not give the laws of the Torah just to tidy up human society. Each commandment communicates a piece of divine revelation, a piece of godliness, more than just rules for governing human behavior. The laws of the Torah reflect the law of giver. Mm -hmm. So when you believe in God, <coughs> you have a relationship with him. Because what's he doing? He's revealing himself he for us so that he can know us. And that we can know him. On the other side of that coin, he's refining his image in us so that we reflect him better. Yeah. yeah. Our master told us, out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. When God broke the silence and spoke to his creation out of Mount Sinai, he spoke from the fullness of his heart. Each law and command, no matter how small or seemingly irrelevant, communicates a piece of revelation from God, an overflowing of his heart. So that's why it says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And love your neighbor as yourself. Mm -hmm. Because what does God do? He loves us with all his heart, soul, mind, and strength. Mm -hmm. And he proved that through yeah, yes. 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 Okay. the Ten Commandments are moral absolutes. They were spoken aloud by God, and everyone heard them. They require no further justification. They are non negotiable. The Ten Commandments are well known, even non believers and people from other religions 
are more or less familiar with the concept of the Ten Commandments. In the United States, political and social battles continue to be waged about whether or not it is appropriate to display the Ten Commandments on public property. The popular culture abounds with jokes about breaking the Ten Commandments, but most people reflectively accept their moral authority. The Ten Matters, the Ten Words, summarize the 613 commandments of the Torah, but they cannot be separated from the Torah or from each other. Some Christian teachers claim that the Ten Commandments are still built, are still valid, but the rest of the laws of the Torah is obsolete. Well. Even Christian Sabbatarians have, for the most part, divorced the Ten Commandments from the rest of the Torah. The Bible itself makes no distinction between the commandments of the Decalogue and the imperatives and prohibitions that follow in the rest of the Torah. The same God spoke both. He bound them upon his people with an equal measure. Did, did you write that or did you take that from somewhere else? First fruits of the time. Okay. <clears throat> A person should not imagine that the Ten Commandments and the Decalogue are the only real commandments and the other 600 and three are merely suggestions. Anyway, I think that's a good statement of our faith. We'll see. We yeah. believe that God's commandments were true then and true now. Yeah. I, I happen to think that the Ten Commandments are very closely related to the four commandments that were given in Acts 15. Mm -hmm. I think that Israel knew God for all that time that they were in captivity but and they were given a starter kit the same way that the people that had no idea who God were in Acts 15 that were coming to faith they were given a smaller starter kit but both the same goal which is Moses being proclaimed every Sabbath yeah, right. yeah. and That's there's right. a common thought at least I was aware of this growing up even in the church that the Old Testament, well, that portrayed a God of wrath. The New Testament portrays, portrays God of love. I see the commandments as his love. Mm -hmm. yeah. they're, they're loving instructions for us because mm -hmm. of that great love. And I cannot see how you can rip apart all these commandments or rip apart what the prophets had to say or the writings and the Nevi'im and the Kedavim. You, you cannot rip it apart because it's a part of him. You right. cannot rip him apart. Turn but we over, try. Turn over the tables of the money to you show the God of wrath. Uh -huh. And that was the New Testament. I think you're yeah. nailing the point of on these two depend the whole, oh, the whole Torah thing. and the writings right on the head. Yeah. Yeah. Love the Lord your God, thy heart, heart, soul, strength, and mind, his statutes. Love your neighbor yourself, the judgments. Yes. We judge on how to treat each other. Mm -hmm. Statutes plus judgments equals Torah. Mm -hmm. right. Well, <clears throat> see, in the this is that the Old Testament was wrath and the New Testament was grace, so to speak. Mm -hmm. The old preacher that I, when I was, I guess, a young teenager. A couple days ago? Yeah, I was just. Four five days. He said uh, he said the Old Testament was God's will concealed and the New Testament is God's will revealed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. That you know, people didn't know until Yeshua came what the what the feasts were, who what the type and shadows were. Mm -hmm. But that was the first revelation. Uh, and so once that revelation came, then we can see the rest of them through those feast days. It's not new, it's just true. Yeah, it's not new, Brad it's just true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. I have to hurry so that uh, people that need to go can go. Did I get that right? <laughs> <laughs> Moses' father-in-law, Yitro, I said, that's you like, yes, I can believe it. <laughs> The priest of Midian heard about everything that God had done for Moses and his people, Israel. And now the Lord had brought, and how the Lord had brought Israel out of Egypt. Then Yitro, Moses' father-in-law, had taken in Zipporah, Moses' wife, after he had sent her back 
along with their two sons, one of whom was named Gershom, because Moses had said, had been a foreigner in a foreign land, and the, and the other, Eleazar, because he had said, God of my father was my helper and delivered me from Pharaoh's sword. Moses followed the law of Hitro, along with Moses, wife, and sons came to him in the wilderness where he was camped at the mountain of God. He sent word to Moses, I, your father-in-law, Etro, am coming to you with your wife and her two sons. So Moses went out to meet his father-in-law, bowed down, and then kissed him. They asked each other how they had been and went into the tent. Moses recounted to his father-in-law all that the Lord had done to Pharaoh and the Egyptians for Israel's sake. All the hardships that confronted him confronted them on the way, and how the Lord delivered them. Yitro rejoiced over all the good things the Lord had done for Israel when he rescued them from the power of the Egyptians. Praise the Lord, Yitro proclaimed, who rescued you from Pharaoh and the power of the Egyptians and snatched the people from the power of the Egyptians. Now I know that Yahweh was greater than all gods because he did, because he did wonders with the Egyptians, acted arrogant, the Egyptians acted arrogantly against Israel. Then Yitro, Moses' father-in-law, brought a burnt offering and sacrifices to God. And Aaron came with all the elders of Israel to eat a meal with Moses' father-in-law in God's presence. So, what's the difference between before we get on to the what's the difference between how Moses and uh, Yitro? Uh, acted when they when they met here after the Exodus had come about. You know when when Moses went to Yitro when he, when God called him he went and got permission. He said I I need to go back to my family. And, you know what he told him. So it was kind of like uh, a father to a son, mm-hmm. right? But here how did they address each other? As equals. More or less as equals. They came and, and praised each other. Yeah. Well, in verse 7 it says, So Moses went out to meet his father in law, bowed down, and kissed him. So right. there's still that right. well, respect. There, there's, there's mutual respect. Difference to this position. So what was Israel's reaction to, the, to, the, uh, uh, to Israel's uh, escape from? Praise the Lord. Yeah, he said, praise the Lord. He said, there is no other God like, like mm-hmm. the God of Israel. Yeah. So what, what was he saying? Like y'all hmm? Well, he was c- claiming Israel's to God. the one true God. One true God, mm-hmm. that's right. Israel's God. Must His God. God. So, who were the Midianites, and how did they get where they are? I mean, how did, how did all that come about? Well, there was Lot and his daughters. Uh-huh. That's Moab. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> then there was Esau. <laughs> <laughs> it actually was Keturah. Yes. Keturah. Yeah, right. What was it? Abraham's? Keturah and Abraham. They were the Midianites. Midian was one of the sons of Keturah. Okay. And Abraham. So there were the Midianites, and they originally went over across the Jordan, but then they came back into Arabia and became shepherds. Okay. Those were the Midianites. Mm-hmm. So now this is a bone of contention that the, the scripture says that uh, Moses was uh, in Midian for 40 years. But y'all remember the, the story in the the Ten Commandments the movie, you know, was made by Cecil B. With Charles and Heston. Yeah, Charles and Heston. Yeah. Yo Brenner. Mm-hmm. Yes. Baldy. Um <laughs> You notice it, it, it portrayed Moses as a, a, a great general. You know, he's coming in, he's gone, gone to war, and they're they're all praising him and all that kind of stuff. What is it? Uh, the book of 
Yasser? What, which book is it that tells about when Moses left uh, Egypt? That he went to Cush. He went to Ethiopia. You know, <laughs> later on it says he, the Cushite woman, yeah. and it says he in fact did marry a Cushite woman. Yeah. I believe it's the book of Jasher. Is it Jasher? I think so. Well, and traditionally they think Keturah is they think that's who Keturah was? No, no. They think that Keturah was the Hagar. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they, there's no proof of that. But, on the other hand, they say that when he left, he went to Cush and was uh, in that kingdom for 20 years. And when the queen of Ethiopia was deposed, that he escaped to, to me. Hmm. Just in Midian for 20 years. But that's not in the Bible. It's not in the Bible, but it's in Yasher. So. But we do know he was outside of Egypt for 40 years. Yeah, he was outside of Egypt. <laughs> Either way. Either way. I'm just saying it's interesting that that, that scenario exists. Well, Miriam Which said happened? they had a problem with his wife. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Being, being out. <clears throat> Being out for four years happens to line up really well with a certain prophecy of somebody coming in for the Jubilee later, mm-hmm. returning to take his bride. Yeah, 40 years. Uh, I think Alvin made a good point this morning, you know, when he said uh, he was in uh, Midian for 40 years, and then he comes back, and everybody's saying, Who are you? I mean, just about everybody ever knew had probably died. I mean, I don't know how long. I don't know that a lot of the Israelites lived a long time. Besides Moses, yeah. his sister, yeah. his brother. Yeah, his brother and sister, they all knew. And it's it appears to me that the, the Kohathites were kind of the leading tribe. It, it, of it Levi? Says, Hmm? Of Levi? No, of all the Israelites. It's like they, they're the ones that kept circumcision. They're the ones that, that kept the law while they were in captivity. You, you get a little bit of that in the movie mm-hmm. Ten Commandments because uh, uh, Yochabel, whenever she says. Yochabel? Yes. Well, I think they have her Yochabel in the movie. Mm-hmm. But they, she said, we are, the, we are the shepherds of. Israel. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, so I mean, it's natural that Aaron would be the one that was chosen to go meet his brother because of that relationship and their position in Egypt. Mm-hmm. So, that, it makes more sense that way to me. I don't know if it matters, you know, one way or the other. Eighteen, thirteen through 23. The next day, Moses sat down to judge the people, and they stood around Moses from morning until evening. When Moses' father-in-law saw everything he was doing for them, he asked, What is this thing that you're doing for the people? Why are you alone sitting as judge while all the people stand around you from morning until evening? Moses replied to his father-in-law, Because the people come to me to inquire of God. Whenever they have a dispute, it comes to me, and I decide between one man and another. I teach them God's statutes and laws. What you're doing is not good, <clears throat> Moses follow off said to him. You will certainly wear out both yourself and these people who are with you, because the task is too heavy for you. You can't do it alone. Now listen to me. I will give you some advice, and God be with you. You be the one to re- represent the people before God and bring their cases to him. Instruct them about the statutes and laws and teach them the way to live and what they must do. But you should select from all the people, able men, God-fearing, trustworthy, and paying bribes. Place them over the people as commanders of thousands, hundreds, fifties, and tens. They should judge the people at all times. Then they can bring you every important case, but judge every minor case themselves. In this way, you will lighten your load, and they will bear it with you. If you do this, and God so directs you, you will be able to endure, and all these people will be able to go home satisfied. I'm going to read number three because it's short. Three and four. Yeah. 
Moses listened to his father and did everything he said. So Moses chose able men from all Israel and made them leaders over the people as commanders of thousands, hundreds, fifties, and tens. They judged the people at all times. They would bring the hard cases to Moses, but they would judge every minor case themselves. Then Moses said goodbye to his father-in-law, and he journeyed to his own land. So Yitro's advice was followed by Moses. And what what did the what did the uh, Jewish people today claim about uh, Yitro? I don't know. That he's the father of the Sanhedrin. Yes. The, oh, okay. the, the, the great council. <coughs> the candle of Saturn. Not the Midian, that's Tanakis. So, it, it's, kind of, it's kind of interesting to me that Moses goes and brings the people out of Egypt and organizes them in a military fashion. So they come out as a host, as an army, yeah. with their heads high. And they, you know, they, uh, Pharaoh has been killed, and now they're out, and he's he's trying to manage them alone. It doesn't make much sense because if he's been a military guy and he's brought people out, and he he should have known that you have to have officers and people to to manage a group. But his father-in-law, who's this shepherd guy. Even though he's the a priest, name? he's the priest of Midian. Yeah, the priest of Midian, the high priest of Midian. He comes and says, "Hey, don't be a dummy. Get this stuff organized and get some people in here to help you." Just one question: hmm? Moses had a military background. He should have known that. That's what I said. Yeah, yeah. he should have. He should have understood yeah, what's going on. Yeah, he should have. Yeah, I just reiterate what you said. <laughs> so. Uh, I remember in a Bible study years ago, this young lady <clears throat> disagreed with Yitro. She said, if God had him in command, Moses in command, he would have given him the strength to do it. That was like a trust in God. But I, I kind of think he was smart getting a group together. Yeah. I don't well, think it was lack of God, uh, trust in God, because you still have to have trust in God even to do that. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> thing is, is, you know, God uses everybody. Yeah. And it, it used you. Yeah. That, uh, he used you to do it. Yeah. That's the way he did it. And uh, maybe it made it to where uh, you know, the sons of Yitro became part of Israel. Mm -hmm. So maybe that was part of it too. Yes. I think a lot of people missed the <clears throat> the Matthew 23 connection. What's the Matthew 23 connection? For the scribes and Pharisees sit in the seat of Moses. Therefore, you must do and observe all they say. Let's talk about right here. What was Moses doing from the seat? Judging from the people. What are they doing from Moses' seat? Yeah. They're reading the Torah. <clears throat> the one time that they're getting it right. <laughs> Actually, it's Matthew 26. In the third month, on the same day of the month that the Israelites had left the land of Egypt, they entered the wilderness of Sinai. After they, they departed from Rephidim, they entered the wilderness of Sinai and camped in the wilderness, and Israel camped there in front of the mountain. Moses went up the mountain to God, and the Lord called to him from the mountain. This is what you must say to the house of Jacob and explain to the Israelites. You have seen what I did to the Egyptians, how I carried you on eagles' wings and brought you to me. Now, if you will listen to me carefully, keep my covenant, you will be my own possession out of all the peoples, although all the earth is mine, and you will be my kingdom of priests and my holy nation. These are the words that you are to say to the Israelites. So, uh, he goes back and he meets God at, the, at Mount Hor, the mountain of God. That's where he started from, right? When he saw the burning fish in the bush. And God told him, you will come back here and worship me on this mountain. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. So, uh, he got there on the new moon, on the third month, exactly six weeks after the Passover, right? Yes, sir. <laughs> okay, so, uh, what did the... What did God uh, call?
called the people at that time. He said, he called them Beit Yaakov. What's Beit Yaakov? The house of Jacob. Jacob. And what would they become? A nation. A segulah, a treasured people, if they obeyed God. Yeah. A treasured people. Now, what what is it? Uh, Y'all remember the the uh, pearl of great value, the treasure, mm -hmm. the parable. Mm -hmm. So, guy discovers this that's in this land, in this piece yeah. of property, and he goes and he sells everything he has and he buys that oh, yes. piece of property <clears throat> yes. for the for the pearl that's of great value. So, who? What is the field? What's the pearl? And who is it? That buys the property there. It builds is Egypt, it builds a pearl, and God buys the property. Yeah, yeah. That's us. But that's I was gonna say that's us. That's us. Mm -hmm. That's that's the, the meaning of the parable is is that God is the one that that's looking for the treasure. Mm -hmm. He's looking for his bride. Mm -hmm. yeah. And and he he would give anything for it. He gives, he gives everything he has to get that property, right? His eyes move to and fro throughout the whole land to see whose heart is generally his. Okay. Exodus 19, 7 through 13. After Moses came back, he summoned the elders of the people and said before them all these words that the Lord had commanded him. Then all the people were responded together, We will do all that the Lord has spoken. So Moses brought the people's words back to the Lord. The Lord said to Moses, I'm going to come to you in a dense cloud so that the people will hear when I speak with you and will always believe you. Then Moses reported the people's words to the Lord. And the Lord told Moses, Go to the people and consecrate them today and tomorrow. They must wash their clothes and be prepared, be prepared by the third day. For on the third day the Lord will come down on Mount Sinai in the sight of all the people, put boundaries for the people all around the mountain and say, be careful that you do not go up on the mountain or touch its base. Anyone who touches the mountain will be put to death. No hand may touch him. Instead, he will be stoned or shot with arrows. No animal or man will live. When the ram's horn sounds a long blast, they must <clears throat> they must go up on the mountain. So, uh, Moses went up, God said, tell the people this is what I'm going to do. And he came back down. What did the people say? Whatever you say, we're going to do it. They hadn't heard it, but they said we're going to do it. Right? It was unconditional. Uh, and so, what's the, what's the promise if, once they said that? He's going to make them what? A holy nation, right? A kingdom of priests and a holy nation. What's that? Uh, in Hebrew, that's Mamlaket Kohanim Bogoi Hadosh. Did I get that right? A nation of priests. <laughs> Got the thumbs up. Uh, why was there a, a three days of preparation, separation, preparation before Sinai? Being cleansed. Body, soul, heart, everything. According to Jewish tradition, uh, when exactly did the uh, God reveal the Torah to Israel? Day of uh -huh. Pentecost, Shavuot. On Sivan 6, later identified with Shavuot, 50 days after the Passover, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So on Sivan 1, the people came to Sinai. On Sivan 2, the people ascended Sinai. I mean, Moses ascended Sinai, and God offered the Torah to Israel. Three, five <clears throat> were the three days of separation. On Sivan 5, Moses offered sacrifices at the foot of the mountain. And on the morning of Sivan 6, the presence of God descended upon Sinai before all Israel exactly 50 days after the Passover. So, uh, why do you think Moses chose Sinai? Why do you think God, not Moses, <laughs> chose Sinai to reveal himself? Where is Sinai? Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia. No, so, Saudi Arabia. You think it was because it was a humble place, nondescript, and not local to the land of Israel? 
just a place out in the desert? Neutral ground. Right. I don't know. That's yeah. true. All nations may accept the truth of Torah. And God comes, He doesn't come to Israel, He comes out in the middle of the desert and says, I'm going to bring you here to teach you my way. Right? Yeah. I'm going to give you my fiery law. There's not going to be any distractions because you have to rely on me. What was what was Israel's big complaint? Water. Water and no food. No. That wasn't their complaint. God took us out here to kill us. He, they, their complaint was is that they had to rely on God. Oh, okay. Yeah. And what was, what was God's complaint? <laughs> Why don't you rely on me? I told you. <laughs> okay. And God meets us in the wilderness and takes us home. Is that where we meet God's in the wilderness? Over and over. Over and over. And over. So what does God do? He does for us what we cannot do for ourselves. Do I remember that? God does for us what we cannot do for ourselves. What What does he do for us that we can't do for ourselves? Save us. We can't save ourselves. We can't save ourselves, but we can't do... We cannot have life without him. We can't do anything without him. That's right. He is the elephant in the room. He's the elephant in the room. Elephant in the top. Elephant in the top. That's how he said elephant. I thought he said elephant in the room. That was Paul. Okay, moving right along. Actually, it's 19, 14, 15, 25. Then Moses came down from the mountain to the people and consecrated them, and they washed their clothes. He said to the people, Be prepared by the third day. Do not have sexual relations with women. On the third day, when morning came, there was thunder and lightning, a thick cloud on the mountain, and a loud trumpet sound, so that all the people in the camp shuddered. Then Moses brought the people out of the camp to meet God, and they stood at the foot of the mountain. Mount Sinai was completely enveloped in smoke because the Lord came down on it in fire. Its smoke went up like the smoke of a furnace, and the whole mountain shook violently. At the sound of the trumpet grew louder and louder. Moses spoke, and God answered him in the thunder. The Lord came down on the Mount Sinai at the top of the mountain. Then the Lord summoned Moses to the top of the mountain, and he went up. The Lord directed Moses, Go down and warn the people not to break through to see the Lord. Otherwise, many of them will die. Even the priests who come near the Lord must purify themselves or the Lord will break out in anger against them. But Moses responded to the Lord, the people cannot come up Mount Sinai since you warned us. Put a, put a boundary around the mountain and consider it holy. And the Lord replied to him, go down and come back with Aaron. But the priest and the people must not break through to come up to the Lord, or he will break out in anger against them. So Moses went down to the people and told them. Hmm. So, what's the deal about putting the boundary, Moses going up, and then God saying, go back down and get Aaron, and tell the people don't touch the mountain and try to break through and then come back up here with Aaron. So what's that all about? And, and Moses saying, the people aren't going to come up here. You already said that you, to put a boundary up. Nobody's going to touch the boundary and die. God says, don't argue with me. Go down there and tell them again. But, and right before that, he said, don't touch the mountain. But when you, you hear the shofar, then go up the mountain. Go up the mountain. Yeah. yeah, then they can come up the mountain. That's what I said about. So maybe he wanted to have a relationship with everybody, but after they freaked out, he said, okay, so much, yeah. just go get your brother. Yeah. Well, so the Hebrew word for, for holiness is <clears throat> kadushah, which describes God as entirely unique, separate, exalted, transcendent. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Sounds right. So in Isaiah 6.3, we read, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God of hosts. This is transcendence. So the very verse immediately adds, the whole earth is filled with his glory, which is eminence. So what is em eminence? You know, if you have an eminent domain, what is that? Like you own a piece of property, and that property you have eminent <coughs> domain. Total control. The whole earth is, is his eminence. What is that? 
for him to take it any time that he wills. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, no, he, he owns it and he sustains it. Yes. Now, when you own property, you own it and su sustain it. Now, there's some people you drive by their houses and they're not good at that sustaining mm -hmm. yeah. Sometimes they have a hole in the wall. <laughs> and sometimes the government goes and says, I'm going to take half of your property and I'm going to claim imminent domain. I'm going to give you a penny for it. It don't matter if you can sell it for a million bucks. I'm going to give you a penny for it and now I'm going to build a school there. Yeah. It, it happened to them. They don't offer a penny. They can't. Yeah, they offer a little bit more. <clears throat> Just enough to keep the natives from revolting. <laughs> Do you know why they? You know why they're, they're getting that land? Because what, 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 where are you talking about? For that, where they're going to build that school. It, it happened to my family. Well, <laughs> because they were going to build a school there, and they built a school there. That many times, I think you guys are thinking about two different spots. You're <laughs> no. thinking about something that's happened. No, I'm thinking about the reason that they do that is because their brother-in-law or their sister or their <laughs> uncle has a construction company and they want to get them to do it. It's all about the money. Location, location, too. Okay. Uh, so why is the first commandment connected to the exodus? What is the first commandment? I am. I'm the Lord God who delivered you out of Egypt. And I'm the Lord your God, right? Who delivered you out of Egypt. Who delivered you from Egypt. So, what what does God deliver us from? Ourselves. 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 From Egypt. Which is Egypt that's what they call the troubles. Mitzray right? means troubles, too. It's also the the troubles. Troubles. So. Now we get into the then God spoke these words. Exodus 20. I am Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the place of slavery. Do not have other gods besides me. Do not make an idol for yourself, whether the shape of anything in the heavens above or in the earth below or in the waters under the earth. You must bow down. You must <laughs> not bow down to them or worship them. For I am the Lord your God and a jealous God, punishing the children for the father's sin the third and fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing faithful love to a thousand generations of those who love me and keep my commandments. Keep my commands. Do not misuse the name of the Lord your God, because the Lord will not leave anyone unpunished who misuses his name. Remember the Shabbat day to keep it holy. You are to labor six days and to do all your work, but the seventh day is a Shabbat to the Lord your God. You must not do any work you, your son, your daughter, your male or female slave, your livestock or the foreigner who is within your gates. For the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea, and everything in them in six days. Then he rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blesses the Shabbat day and declared it holy. Honor your father and mother so that you may have a long life in the land that the Lord your God has given you. Do not murder, do not commit adultery, do not steal, do not give false testimony against your neighbor. Do not covet your neighbor's house, do not covet your neighbor's wife, his male or female slave, his ox or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. All the people witnessed the thunder and the lightning, the loud, the sound of the trumpet, and the mountain surrounded by smoke. When the people saw it, they trembled and stood at a distance. You speak to us and we will listen, they said to Moses. But don't let God speak to us or we will die. Moses responded to the people, don't be afraid, for God has come to test you so that you will fear him and will not sin. And the people remained standing at a distance as Moses approached the thick darkness where God was. Then the Lord told Moses, This is what you are to say to the Israelites. You have seen that I have spoken to you from heaven. You must not make gods of silver to revile me. You must not make gods of gold for yourselves. Can you go back? Can you go back? Where am I going back to to the number six, and then go up to, can you read that in the Hebrew? The 18. All the people witnessed the thundering and lightning, the sound of the trumpet, and the, the mountain surrounded by smoke. When yeah. People saw it, they trembled and stood at a distance. 
Mm -hmm. Do you think that's a little lesson? Because I think that that's where it's, um, you know, when they talk about that one, that's where they saw the voice. Oh, yeah. yeah. They saw the voices, mm -hmm. not in the, yeah, they saw, they saw the voices. Yeah. And so in the Targums, mm -hmm. um, so Itzhak points out to the JPS when they translate that into English that they, they heard the voice of God. And Itzhak goes, oh, no, 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 no. They didn't see, they didn't hear the voice of God. It's not kol, it's kolot, which is the plural for voices. voices. And then in the Targums, the, which were the Aramaic of the Bible that they would have writ, read during Yeshua's time, it's that they saw the voice of the lightning, they saw the voice of the rain, they saw the voice of the wind. Hmm. Hmm. Which was, and, they, and we know that the voice of, of the, the lightning and the thunder in the shofar are the, the thunder that was from the heaven, that's the Father. We know that the Ruach, the wind, is the Holy Spirit, and we know that the water, Mem, Mashiach, mm -hmm. Messiah, were were all in the water, and that's when they said the prayer of the six hundred thousand, which was uh, has in it Baruch of Abishem Adonai, right. um, but I said it in Hebrew and not in Aramaic, but that was the first time, and they didn't say that again until Rabbi Kadori died earlier in what in two thousand sixteen or two thousand six. When he died, there had not been enough men together, the 600,000 men, to say that, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Yeah. What's, uh, what's interesting is that uh, right at the end, he said, make sure that they don't make any idols of silver or gold. Yes. Silver to rival me and gold for themselves. Right. But, but it's kind of like he said, Tomorrow they're going to build a golden calf up while Moses is up on the mountain. Mm -hmm. He said, go down and tell them not to do this. Mm -hmm. I never noticed that. Mm -hmm. ever noticed that? Bless you. Oh, it's, still going to take them, it's still going to take them a few days. Mm. No, I mean, just before, I mean, he, they're doing all this. Yes. And he's going to go up and, and mm -hmm. get the tablets and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, Be missing for 40 days. Uh, he, he said, make sure and tell them not to do this. And then, what did they do? I never did this this year until when they came, when they came out first and said, don't do this. And that's what we had to purchase. Mm -hmm. Right. When you get purchased. What was it you said? I never noticed until this year, whenever whenever they come out, it oh, says, do oh, you have to purchase? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, Ten Commandments. I'm the Lord your God. No idols. No name in vain. Keep the Shabbat. Honor your parents. No murder. No adultery. No stealing. No false witness. And no coveting. Are y'all ready for it? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, I'm the Lord your God. No murder. Uh, don't do away with God. Don't do away with your fellow man. No idols, no adults. Don't put anything between me and you, and don't put anything between you and your family. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. No name in vain, no stealing. So if we take, we steal something, we profane God's name because we don't believe in Him for His provision, right? Yeah. Keep the Shabbat, no false witness. If you don't keep the Shabbat, you're calling God a liar that that day wasn't set apart and holy. Mm -hmm. Honor your parents, no coveting. How is coveting not honoring your parents? Well, don't you, want anymore if you didn't grow up with it. Well, <laughs> you don't want to be you. You said, I want to be, I want to be my neighbor. I want his house. I want his wife. I want his male and female slaves. I want his donkey. I want his camel. I want everything. I don't want to be me. I want to be my neighbor. No, I want to be a girl. I want to be a girl. Okay, now you're the girl. Anyway, the point being is, is that God made you through your parents. Yeah. And honoring your parents is honoring God because God is the one that uh, ultimately made us all. Right? 
He didn't make junk. He didn't make junk. That's right. God don't make no junk. <coughs> no, he didn't. Oh. He can make something out of nothing too. Why not? He can make something out of nothing. Yeah. There's, there's there's those, there are those that start counting from I am the Lord your God, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then others know their God before me, right? Right. Mm-hmm. And then there's others that kind of change that up and they put two covets at the end because you have two separate covets instances. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And if you put all those together, there's twelve. <laughs> But there's still only ten words. I understand. I'm just saying. You, if, you, if you were to use two. half, if you were to use half of Jewish tradition and half of Christian tradition, you would end up with twelve. On these two hanging others. I just find that, I just find that interesting. Mm-hmm. I don't know if there's good. It's really interesting. There's sometimes I do use the word coincidence. If or I what? Coincidence. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> no such thing. <laughs> We're going to read Isaiah. All right. All right. That's the second hand. <clears throat> and the year that King Isaiah died, I saw the Lord seated on a high and lofty throne, and his robe filled the temple. Seraphim were standing above him, and each one had six wings. Two with two he covered his face, with two he covered his feet, and with two he flew. And one called to another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. His glory fills the whole earth. The foundations of the doorway shook at the sound of their voices, and the temple was filled with smoke. Then I said, Woe is me, for I am ruined, because I am a man of unclean lips, and live among people of unclean lips. And because my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, and in his hand was a glowing coal that he had taken from the altar with tongs. He touched my mouth with it and said, Now that this has touched your lips, your wickedness is removed, and your sin is atoned for. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Who should I send? Who will go for us? And I said, Here I am, send me. And he replied, Go, say these words. Say, these, say to these people, keep listening, but do not understand. Keep looking, but do not perceive. Dull the minds of these people. Deafen their ears and blind their eyes. Otherwise, they might see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their minds. Turn back and be healed. Then I said, until when, Lord? And he replied, until cities lie in ruins without inhabitants. Houses are without people. The land is ruined and desolate. And the Lord drives the people far away, leaving great emptiness in the land. Though a tent will remain in the land, it will be burned again, like the caravan or, or the oak that leaves a stump when it fell. The holy seed is the stump. This took place during the reign of Ahaz, son of Yotam, son of Uzziah, king of Yehuda, raising the king of Aram, along with Pekah, son of Ramalia, king of Israel, waged war against Jerusalem, but he could not succeed. When it, came, when it became known to the house of David that Aram had occupied Ephraim, the heart of Ahaz and the hearts of his people trembled like trees of a forest shaking in the wind. Oh, man. I just went south. Then the Lord said to Isaiah, Go out with your son, Shear Yeshub, to me Ahaz, at the end of the conduit of the upper pool, by the road of the fuller's field. Say to him, Calm down and be quiet. Don't be afraid or cowardly because of these two smoldering stubs of firebrands, the fierce anger of Razan and Aram, and the son of Ramalia. For Aram, along with Ephraim, and the son of Ramalia, have plotted harm against you. They say... Let us go up against Yehuda, terrorize it, and conquer it for ourselves. Then call, then we can install Tabil's son as king in it. In Isaiah 9, 5 and 6. For the trampling boot of battle and the bloody garments of war will be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child will be born for us, a son will be given to us, and the government will be on his shoulders. He will be named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. 
<laughs> so, <clears throat> so how do the sages connect this piece to the, the covenant it's uh, signed? Well, the response of the prophet Isaiah to the Lord's question, whom will I send? And he says, you can send me. And what was the answer? He says, here I am. And, he's, and then God says, go and tell the people, you're not going to listen, you're not going to see, you're not going to hear. I'm going to get rid of everybody but a stump. Who's this? What does it say the stump is? The stump of Jesse. The stump of Jesse. It's the, it's the holy remnant. Yeah. So, throughout... Uh, history, God has preserved the holy remnant, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And what was that holy remnant supposed to do? Guard the Torah. Guard the Torah. So I would say that the holy remnant has done its job. Do you? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think um, Isaiah's son's name, Shar Joshu, means a remnant will return. If mm-hmm. I'm remembering that correctly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, a remnant will return. Mm-hmm. Uh, God then commissioned Isaiah to go tell the people, listen again and again, but do not understand. Look again and again, but do not see. As with Pharaoh, the heart of the listeners would be hardened for the message to be disregarded. So why? That's why he speaks in similitudes or parables. That's right. And that's what Yeshua said. said they said, why are you speaking in these parables? He says, because it's not being given them to know. Or they do not hear, seeing they do not see. Right. Thus we would hear with their ears, see with their eyes, and turn to you. So, and, and also in that verse that you have up there from Isaiah, verse 6, where a child is born. A son is given. Right, so there's the two words in Hebrew for child, or for... A child is a yelid. Mm-hmm. It's like the adolescent. And then the son is the one who walks in the fullness of uh, the birthright. Then... The bin, and and so here is the yelled. He did. The rabbis are now saying that Yeshua, or uh, Yeshua, the son of Joseph, that the Messiah Ben Joseph, didn't walk in the fullness. He represents Messiah in his immaturity, um, coming and being killed, where. When he re- when it talks about the son, is he'll return uh, as the conquering king, you know, kind of like the same thing we listened about Moses today, where I had never heard of Moses, the two comings of Moses, as Moses representing the Messiah, is that he came and he tried, you know, he did what he did, and they rejected him, and he left for forty years, and then forty years later, God re- sends him back as the conquering king. Right. And it until this year it never when he was when he was eighty marking the fourth day as well. And and just now he's an old man. Right. And now but now he's operating as the son. Right. In the fullness. Um and the two comings of Messiah, even in Moses. Son is mm-hmm. son is baked noon, right? See you that Ben. Uh-huh. Yes. Mm-hmm. Right. And whereas Yellet is the the adolescent I hadn't um heard of in, in in this context, the other things that were written about that verse that hadn't been translated into English before, so that, and I've only listened to it a couple times, but it's starting to. As the more I see it, the more it, it pops out. It's starting to congeal, mm-hmm. come together. Maybe. Okay. Yeah, the one that has to be led to the door. Yeah, I was going to say the house in the house in the house. Okay, Matthew eight fifty five to twenty. When he entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him, pleading with him, Lord, my servant is dying, lying at home paralyzed in terrible agony. I will come and heal him, he told him. Lord, the centurion replied, I am not worthy to have you come under my roof, but only say the word, and my servant will be cured. For I, too, am under authority, having soldiers under my command. I say to this one, go, and he goes, and another and to another come, and he comes, and to my slave do this, and he does it. Hearing this, Yeshua was amazed and said to those following him, I assure you, I have not found anyone in Israel with so great a faith. I tell you that many will come from east and west and recline the table with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob 
in the kingdom of heaven but the sons of the kingdom will be thrown into the outer darkness in that place where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth then Yeshua told the centurion go as you have believed let it be done for you and his servant was cured at that very moment when Yeshua went into Peter's house he saw his mother-in-law lying in bed with a fever so he touched her hand and the fever left her then she got up and began to serve him when the evening came they brought to him many who were demon demon possessed he drove out the spirits with a word and healed all who were sick so that they that what was spoken through the prophet Isaiah might be fulfilled he himself took our weaknesses and carried our diseases when Yeshua saw a large crowd around him he gave the order to go to the other side of the sea a, a scribe approached him and said teacher I will follow you wherever you go Jesus told him foxes have dens birds of the sky have nests but the son of man has no place to lay his head so uh, how does that fit in with the, with the Ten Commandments? Silence is definite. Which one did the assured, I assure you, have not, not found faith in anyone in Israel? That one? Or the, the faith, in, the faith in Israel no. and uh, the centurion that had faith. Mm -hmm. Well, he was saying that he's in charge and he knows how that works. You're God. Whatever you say will happen. Mm -hmm. Well, the centurion <clears throat> and Jesus, the Jews didn't associate with the Gentiles at that time. Right. So he just had the faith that he would heal him, but he couldn't be with him or you sure couldn't come to his house. Because that was really not allowed at that time. Yeah. Well, it was allowed. It wasn't accepted. Okay. Yeah. 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 But, but, but the deal is, is that uh, the Gentile follower of Yeshua had greater faith than yeah. anyone in Israel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's why they weren't allowed to see, hear, or do it. That's why mm -hmm. in Isaiah, it said they will... They will have eyes, but they won't see. They have ears, but they won't hear. They will be blinded. Why he spoke in parables or similitudes? That's right. But the scraps are given to the little dogs. Mm -hmm. But what was what was the whole purpose for? What did Paul say? He said, "Your eyes have been dimmed so that others can come in." That's right. So he said, "Yeah." So uh, that's. That's something that I know that people talk about all the time, but I, I'm curious as to how much people push too far beyond that. Because there's there's tons of people that are keeping the Torah, and they do believe in King Mashiach, right? They believe in the Son of David that he's going to come back. Mm -hmm. But then you have a whole other group of people saying that those people don't believe at all, and I don't know how far into that. We should go. Well, the thing is, is the Jewish people believe in the Messiah. They don't recognize the Messiah. Just like Jesus' brothers came. Uh, the veil remains over the face. Yeah. They didn't recognize their brother, but right. their brother recognizes them. Mm -hmm. It's the same today. But they might recognize him when he comes back. Yeah. We might, what we've made him into, we may not recognize him. That's right. That's my point. Yeah. Yeah. That, that is a good point. Yeah. I've got one for you now. Some of y'all might recognize this from my <coughs> Hi, Dad. It's me, Calvin. How's work going? Uh, pretty day out, isn't it? Yep. Mm -hmm. Are you bringing me home any presents tonight? No? Well, just thought I'd ask. Listen, I suppose you're wondering why I called. He's... <laughs> Water all over the house. He's on top of the ladder. <laughs> Dad, your poles took a big dive this week. Your overall bad performance rating was especially low. See, right about yesterday, your popularity went down the twos. Calvin, you didn't get dessert yesterday because you flooded the house. 
I'd suggest a new plan of work, Dad. Dad somewhere else. He's blind and he don't see. All I need is my presence. Forget about what I've done. I want the stuff without the responsibility. Yeah, seeking the hand and not the face. Yes. Okay. Next week is Mishpatim. Judges. Mishpatim. Y'all make sure and y'all read Exodus 21 1 to 24 18. I know they have Mishpacha. Yeah, me too. There will be tests. There will be quizzes. There may not be tests, but there will be questions. And there'll be a pop quiz. Okay, let's, let's say a blessing real quick so that uh, uh, Kelsey can get her back and get checked. You're a mess. I am, I am. I'm horrible. Join me. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who gave to us the Torah of truth, Yeshua our Messiah, and life everlasting, set in our midst. Blessed are you, Lord, giver of the Torah. In Hebrew. Great peace of those who love your law, nothing can make them stumble. The way of the wicked is like deep darkness. They do not know what makes them stumble. For if you had believed Moses, you would have believed me, for he wrote of me. But if you do not believe his writings, how will you believe my words? Proverbs 419 reminds me of Egypt in the deep darkness. It was so dark, but they didn't know spiritually what made them stumble. They were relying on the sun god. <laughs> so the deep darkness kicked him out. Ray Band. O oh, daughters of Zion, O oh, Abraham's sons, hear the words of your father, hear his promise of love. I will make you a blessing, so count the stars if you can. You will be a great nation I will give you this land I will bring you back home I'll bring you back home Oh my children You will no longer roam Lost and alone in the night There is nothing on earth that could take you away Once I gather you under my wings I will bring you all back home again Though you've wandered like strangers To the ends of the earth I will send you Savior, I will finish my work. You have no other shepherd, you have no other Lord. Green pastures are waiting in Zion once more.
But don't fear, oh my daughters, or oh sons of Abraham. For I will wash you with water. Oh, I will offer the lamb. Though your sins were like scarlet, they'll be 